like to, to thank you for joining us. Uh, this is a special webinar organized by the guest editors of uh, Revue de l'Entrepreneuriat, uh, uh, Revue of Entrepreneurship. So it's a French international journal. Uh, we have the special honor today to have uh, the former editor in chief that she will uh, talk about us. So she just informed me that she had uh, some technical issue as I also face it. So I don't know, today is the day of the technical issues, but we're trying to solve them. So I'm delighted to have uh, this, uh, uh, this session because uh, we're going to have in a very intense format uh, um, uh, a presentation of uh, um, the articles that has just been published just a few days in the journal review on entrepreneurship on a very important issue uh, entrepreneurial ecosystems so the goal here is to uh, to continue the discussions about entrepreneurial ecosystems we have six papers um, we have been reflected on this uh, special issue um, uh, the last uh, the last 10 years so now the the goal of this special issue is to provide a state of the art where we are today and what would be uh, the following research discussion. Um, uh, with that, uh, I wanted to, to show some of uh, the, uh, the ecosystem we have been in the special issue, uh, because it was not only an initiative of, uh, uh, of some, um, uh, but there have been also a community that we have we are working the last uh, years so to establish this uh, reflection. Um, I have the great honor to be uh, to, to to work on this special issue with David Aldrich, who is uh, with us, and Didier Chabot. This presentation, uh, as I would think, uh, we have a, a small uh, a small group uh, working on this um, on this uh, topic. We have uh, the leading authors talking about uh, this uh, topic, and then um, you will also provide uh, in the chat some links to join in this uh, this article. Uh, we had a question in the chat whether the articles are free, uh, free available. I highly encourage you to ask this uh, to the uh, former editor in chief. Uh, the articles are um, provided by the editor Kern. Uh, so normally some uh, some um, uh, universities have access uh, through the editor. Um, so as I was. Um, uh, referring the schedule today will be uh, a presentation of the editorial uh, special issue. Uh, we'll have the presentation of the journal and we'll have the sixth presentation in a five minute format. So I'm very glad that Didier could find the slides and share them. So if you can share it in a, in a full screen, it would be great. So as I was talking about the ecosystem we have, the ecosystem we have, we have uh, three guest editors. If we can have the previous slide. So we have three guest editors, David Aldrich, myself, uh, and Didier Chabot. So the special issue, it has, a, 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 as you can see, a very large community. So three guest editors, we have the handling editor, which is the former editor of the review, but uh, she was handling this uh, special issue for us, Celine Baretti. Uh, I don't know if Celine has uh, unable to join us, but she's joined us in, uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, and the speakers today will have Maxime's presentation, uh, Fiza, Khalid, uh, Thibault, Ken Ob, but she will, it will be presented by Jean Michel Saou in the first presentation, Christophe Leonard, Karine Figuel, and Etienne Saint Jean. Um, so uh, the schedule about uh, today's presentation uh, will be presentation of the review, so Celine, so we'll see if she can join us, otherwise it will be in there, so she can also respond to your questions. Uh, then we present uh, the, the gaps of the special issues, so me, Didier, uh, and uh, David Aldrich. Um, and uh, then we start the six presentations of uh, the special issue. The first presentation, as I was saying, will be presented in a, a very uh, quickly by Jean-Michel Saou. Then we have Maxime Beliski talking about the national ecosystem uh, of entrepreneurship. Then Fiza Khalid with Penn speaking. Um, and uh, then Christophe Leronas, then Karim Mess again, and then Etienne Saint Jean. Uh, we have a very limited time for your questions. So we kindly invite you during the papers, please refer to the paper and add your questions to the chat. We're trying to think of them and I have a time in the end. So the advances in entrepreneurial ecosystem, uh, places, time, space, and context. 
Uh, I don't know, uh, David, if you can tell us uh, some of uh, your thoughts uh, of uh, this special issue, what, um, what animated the entrepreneurial ecosystem scholarly discussion. Um, well, thanks, Christina. Thanks for organizing this. Uh, Christina is really the, the force behind the special issue was her idea. She conceived it. She uh, brought us together. She championed it. She brought the journal together with the editorial team and then uh, 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 really oversaw the entire review process. So this, um, uh, this focus or this theme of uh, advances in entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, with the, the focus on time, space, and context. You know, the, the, the special issue is, uh, is, is here to highlight uh, uh, how the topic has already uh, been introduced into the entrepreneurship literature. I mean, entrepreneurial ecosystems, uh, thanks to Christina, and other young scholars has, has uh, gained a lot of momentum. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, it's been identified uh, why they exist, what constitutes an entrepreneurial ecosystem, who the different players are, what the different roles are, what the different functions are. Um, there's a lot of, um, uh, I would say, case studies uh, out there, but there's three dimensions that seem to be uh, uh, where there's not systematic knowledge. And one is, or, or, or evidence, I, I think that in a positive sense, the literature has done real well at identifying the, the, just the concept in the existence of entrepreneurial ecosystems. It seems obvious now, but 10 years ago was not obvious. Uh, so it's widespread, but how entrepreneurial ecosystems evolve over time. That is, where do they come from? How are they created? And then how do they evolve over time uh, is uh, not really well understood and well developed. So that's one, one dimension of entrepreneurial ecosystems is focused. The other is the space, spatial dimension or the ge geographic dimension. That is, what is the spatial relationships involved in the uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, is it very local? What does that even mean, local? Is it more regional? Is it a provincial level, a national level, global level? And do these different levels interact with each other? Uh, because surely uh, uh, not all of the players or institutions, or organizations involved in a space in an entrepreneurial ecosystem are have the same geographic dimension. We know some, there are companies that are global in nature. There are some institutions that are national in nature or international in nature. And then there's some very local uh, uh, organizations and actors as well. So the second component is the geographic component. And the third is the, uh, what uh, Christina calls is the context of the, uh, of the entrepreneurial ecosystem which is the particular situation in terms of the uh, idiosyncratic nature of the, of the location, uh, what are the industries involved, what are the, um, uh, what, what is the uh, uh, culture, what is the history, the, the, the different aspects that make one uh, ecosystem unique from another that she would very generally calls context. And so that puts more flesh and blood in onto a theoretical construct, an ecosystem. They're all rooted in the very real uh, uh, flesh and blood uh, existence of, 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 uh, of, uh, of, of countries and places. So roughly that's what the focus is. Thanks, Christina. Thank you very much, David, for uh, this uh, this overview of this topic. Um, we can now pass on to the sixth slide, uh, slide number six. Uh, it was very important a reflection from the scientific community to reflect on entrepreneurial ecosystem. 
But uh, as I was saying before, it's also a community of uh, reviewers, and uh, uh, we need to, to we need to ensure a, a rigorous uh, product uh, process of this uh, of this um, uh, review process. So uh, we had uh, um, 33 total submissions for this special issue, showing a great interest of the research community to uh, advance their ecosystem uh, discussion. We dis we selected 17 peer uh, review uh, manuscripts that uh, we uh, proceeded with the peer review process, and we have six of them accepted. So we have 26 percent of uh, active constraint. We try to uh, to work with the co uh, with the authors to establish what we'll show to today. But we wanted to say a big thank you because we have more than 50, 60 reviews during this process, and we like to thank the anonymous reviewers that ensure and help us improve the papers that we will present today. So thank you very much. And I know that some of the reviewers are joining and hear us. So we'd like to thank you. I've not revealed your identity, but thank you very much for uh, allowing us to uh, to have this discussion today. Uh, now, uh, the, so what animators and Hans David expressed very well in the next slide, uh, we saw that entrepreneurship uh, literature has been trying the last years. So we, we saw that was the, the case with the entrepreneurship literature has been sitting in establishing and building a sustainable societies and economic growth. At the same uh, time, we saw some policy makers are trying to produce some isolated elements, produce incubators, produce uh, uh, a university or entrepreneurial programs. So we see some isolated initiatives that have been uh, leaded uh, uh, in the goal to have economic growth. Um, and at this effort, the entrepreneurial ecosystem emerged and appeared as a holistic viewpoint to gather, to establish this interconnectedness between these isolated elements. But still, literature tells us that we lack theory and the main studies have been static. So this was the initial step of our special issue. We want to elaborate a discussion in more holistic views and provide also a nested approach considering the sub-ecosystem and also their overlapping nature. Uh, therefore, in the next slide, we can see that we, uh, con we we launched the discussion by the established definition that is already in the literature with Spiegel and Sam. Uh, they, uh, ben Spiegel, he's with us today, so you can ask also questions. So this definition say that the ecosystem is a set of interdependent actors and factors that are coordinating in such a way to enable productive entrepreneurship in a particular territory. So this is a, a nice definition we have. Uh, uh, but, uh, so the good thing is that it provides the existence of various and heterogeneous actors and factors. It also provides that these actors and factors are interconnected to reach an outcome that can be the productive entrepreneurship. And the third element is that this, this is focalized in a specific territory. However, beyond this uh, uh, important element that provides the definition, it doesn't provide an important element, which is the time, the time, the geographical boundaries, uh, where were they delimitated and what are the layers of these boundaries, and then the interconnectedness and contextualization of uh, the ecosystem. So this was the initial part. This is the gap we identified, and based on that, we, we ask the authors to reflect on this uh, on these questions. So in the next slide, we see that we established the, uh, the entrepreneurial ecosystem research in four pillars, as David was uh, describing four categories that, as you can see, are interconnected and overlapping, the structural perspective, the interaction perspective, the temporal perspective, and the spatial perspective. And all of them, they work in a such a way to, pro to, pro to provide economic growth. So the papers we'll see uh, will uh, contribute to these four dimensions, and some of them and more of that. So without Taking more uh, time of you, uh, I would like to launch the presentation. Uh, the presentation floor. We start uh, the presentation in five minutes, so uh, five minutes with presentation. You can use slide or not. Uh, and the first presentation is in slide ten. Uh, it's uh, uh, the paper of constructing a participatory finance platform, uh, thought of territorial ecosystem, and a case study of effervescence. Uh, I will share with you this, the link uh, in the chat, and I will give the floor to Jean-Michel uh, Saou, who is going to present it in a very quick time, five minutes, uh, the presentation of this paper. So we can stop sharing and probably give the floor if Jean-Michel Saou want to share.
Okay. Well, thank you, Sina. What is um, the uh, the objective and the goal of this paper? Um, it's because, in fact, um, this paper is focused on uh, participatory refinance and confounding, in particular, in um, a special context, in a special ecosystem, in a local ecosystem. In fact, um, we know that the arrival of uh, participatory refinance and especially uh, crowdfunding as Anshil uh, ecosystem, local ecosystem, but because the um, the connecting uh, project holders, support actor, and a lot of uh, stakeholders in a local ecosystem and in a territorial territorial terri terri ecosystem. In fact, uh, this problematic is not well uh, examined by the literature, and uh, especially when you have um, some uh, specific project because um, this crowdfunding platform is specialized on a um, social project. So finally, uh, in order to better understand, in fact, uh, how this sort of ecosystem and this sort of platform can create value in this specific ecosystem, uh, we use, in fact, the concept of business model, and especially we use, in fact, as a, the model uh, developed um, uh, by um, uh, the G GRP model, generation, remuneration, and sharing model, developed by West Rashad, Kremen, and uh, Louis Lafitte in 2012, um, in order to, to understand the, the creation of value. So, um, in this paper, in fact, we develop uh, a green map uh, with this model. Uh, in order to understand, in fact, uh, the role of the different stakeholders uh, in an entrepreneurial project and how this sort of project can enhance the value uh, of organizer involving the entrepreneurial project within a territory. In fact, in indeed, this platform is a result of a construction by public and private. Um, it, might, it means a non-profit also organization and territorial actor with the objective of creating a non-financial territorial added value on project considered to be committed and citizen focus. In fact, the, the example of the platform that we took is a, a platform uh, of a Centre Val de Loire region. Uh, it's a project, um, in fact, initiated by uh, the local uh, uh, region. And uh, in fact, the principle is very, very simple because um, they organize or they try to promote some uh, social project, but they don't want to take the, the decision to finance this project. So they offer the opportunity to the citizen to finance the project. And if the citizen finance the project, they add uh, more euro. For example, for one euro financed by the citizen, in fact, uh, the region had one uh, euro more and a partnership with different bank had one euro more. It means that if you have a run project around um, 20,000 uh, euro uh, plus multiply by three, it means that it, it gives a financing of uh, 60,000 euro per project. So, um, the, when you are involved, and especially uh, when we de discuss, in fact, the role of um, the Région Centre Val de Loire in this project is, okay, they finance, they promote the project, they finance also uh, all the infrastructure for the platform, and also they add uh, some fund. So what is really the value created uh, with this sort of project? And if the value, um, is well understood by uh, the different stakeholders and creates, in fact, uh, some territorial value. Because when you, you when you finance this sort of social project, uh, one of the objective is uh, to add different services to uh, the citizen, but also uh, it helps some unemployed people uh, to get a job. And this one is uh, one of the reasons they decided to. Uh, finance uh, this sort of initiative. So with uh, this uh, paper, um, we were able, in fact, to better understand uh, the value of creation. 
uh, and also the nature um, of the ecosystem and how they have to structure um, the relationship between the different partners in order um, to have a success, uh, in, in order to have uh, to be able, in fact, to uh, raise funds from citizens and to have uh, successful projects and sustainable projects. So, um, in fact, um, the creation of these uh, partition financial tools by this territorial system was reinforced by the ability of the different actors to collaborate around this project, bringing together different members and conferring coherence to the whole. And in this study, we have sought to explain uh, this overall coherence uh, with today function and answers that is primary role of territorial value creation. In fact, uh, uh, when you see the, the literature and uh, it exists some uh, uh, work and some study uh, in this field, like the work of Calme et all, um, our study uh, it uh, it different and. Um, in fact, uh, we was evolved with this sort of, of study uh, to better uh, explain the creation of value and uh, the interorganizational modality of this terrorized business model in the sense of uh, Milfert and Robert um, that, um, in fact, they described this one in their article in 2017. Finally, um, if we try to, to see what um, we can do with this sort of article, we can uh, take it as an example in order to reproduce, in fact, the creation of this sort uh, of plat this sort of platform in a different region. And um, it will help, in fact, the different actor uh, to, to understand how to build the platform, how to organize the platform and the collaboration between the different actors in order uh, to have a success and in order to create a value. Because if the platform is not able to create this territorial value, in fact, um, the platform can, um, uh, can go to bankruptcy and can fail uh, in uh, the objective to finance uh, this sort of financial project. So finally, um, also this article has uh, some uh, certain limitation and uh, we'll try in the future uh, to develop um, uh, other study in order to um, better understand also, um, we try to define this uh, territorial value, but we are not able to measure it uh, concretely. So we have now to define some scales uh, and we are working also in some project and especially with this platform in order to, defirm, to define in terms of scale, in order to measure this question value and to see um, how uh, this sort of platform is sustainable, uh, not because it just, um, this experience has just a few years uh, in a long uh, perspective, in a long-term uh, perspective. Voilà. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we go to the next presentation of uh, Maxime Belisky So thanks very much again, Christina uh, and and the dream team of this journal um, of the Review of Entrepreneurship Special Issue on Entrepreneurial Ecosystem. It's been, it's been really special. It's been an honor to be part of the community and it's been a part of, of uh, this special issue. Uh, it's a paper with my co-author, Nader Rajib, from ECD Business School in, in France. And he, there we took, um, we kind of stepped a, a step up uh, in looking at the entrepreneurial ecosystem, in fact, at the national level, which is more unconventional rather than looking at entrepreneurial ecosystem at uh, city level, as it's known in the paper of Spiegel, uh, 2018. Uh, Spiegel and Harrison, and the paper of Audrey and Belitsky in uh, 2017 in, in uh, JTT. So there, there's been lots of research on entrepreneurial ecosystem, I think now about 3,000 papers. Most of them, in fact, focus on regions and cities, and sometimes, you know, smaller uh, clusters and regions. So we up the game saying, well, look, there's also the national institutional context 
that uh, they're in role, um, the national factors, such as in particularly formal and informal institutions, uh, are important for entrepreneurial activity, quality of entrepreneurship, and most importantly, intention to become an entrepreneur. So we, we started by thinking about the laws and norms and the cultural attitudes and a, a plethora of studies that have demonstrated that institutions really matter and very important for entrepreneurial intentions to start a business and for the supporting infrastructure of entrepreneurial ecosystems. Multiple studies, according Theodoraki and uh, Kandansaro, Theodoraki, Massenham and Rice, they talked about the role of embedders and the role of institutions and the different pillars that facilitate entrepreneurship activity. So in fact, entrepreneurial ecosystem literature has also argued that institutions, um, institutions cater for those entrepreneurial network and shape interactions between different actors and stakeholders within the ecosystem. They affect how entrepreneurs decide to enter the market or being selected out the market or leave the market to decide on how much to invest or where to go in Angola, in US, in France, in Poland, in China. Much research has been found that institutions in fact represent the rules of the game and influence the, this interaction and economic exchange between, uh, between uh, economic agents. <laughs> within the ecosystems. Um, so what we did, we looked at the formal and informal pillars of institutions embedded into the national environment. More specifically, this is, uh, we look at the, uh, at the formal side of institutions as government size, which for example, can affect entrepreneurship directly because it sets the rules of the game. And it's also about how much government is involved in the entrepreneurial activity and in management of, of economy. We hypothesize that the larger is the government, the less entrepreneurs will be willing to start a business, the less they will be willing to register the business and to enter the market. So overall, uh, in the national entrepreneurial ecosystem, their growth in the government size, in the government's influence of the economy will reduce entrepreneurial entry and even entrepreneurial intentions. We also saw the other important factor, of course, is tax. And there's a lot of study on tax and particularly in the Small Business Economic Journal. So we would imagine that increasing the tax rate implies that, of course, the government plays a more protective role, but also government wants to extract some money from the system. And so the increase in the tax burden may have a negative effect on the entrepreneurial intentions. The importance of the or and the, the essential of looking at the country level um, of taxes because it's it's in most of the countries taxes is national. Uh, there are some local taxes, but the main taxes are national taxes. And of course, if the tax on the business is high, then uh, the entrepreneurs will be less willing to enter the market. So the inter entrepreneurial intentions will be negatively affected uh, as they cannot see. Um, you know, how, how, as, as they are potentially their profit is going, going to be affected. There are also claims that taxes actually does not affect entrepreneurial intentions because as you are not yet an entrepreneur, you are, you are indifferent how big is the tax if you're still thinking to start a business. Finally, we talked about the informal institutions. Well, informal institutions um, it's a certain the rules and of the, the, the customs, ideas, culture. So we sort of, um, we used corruption as a proxy for informal institution. Corruption can increase the speed with which bureaucrats issue permits and negotiate with entrepreneurs for market entry. Also, corruption may, may be more or less prevalent in different economies, creating a higher risk of doing business, high uncertainty. So we also hypothesize that corruption is going to negatively affect the business. And we also uh, hypothesize that the combination of high tax and high corruption is again going to uh, negatively affect the business. The data we used is, is we use multiple sources of data uh, from 2005 to 2016, one year lagged for explanatory variables, 60, uh, 76 countries, 
and um, and uh, we use the doing business uh, statistics. We use World Bank Group entrepreneurship snapshot indicators, jam indicators, international labor organization, and world government indicators. So what we found, our main dependent variable was entrepreneurial intention is the percentage of people in the economy, in the country that are planning in the next three years to start their own business. This is an indicator from JAM. And then what we found that in fact, government size was not associated with entrepreneurial intentions. Countries with a larger or smaller size of the government will have experienced the same level of entrepreneurial intentions and market entry. In fact, tax, as one would imagine, had a negative effect on entrepreneurial intentions to enter because it increased cost. So is corruption. And in countries with a higher corruption, we'll also experience a lower uh, entry market entry rate, at least formal market entry rates, because it, it, it takes some parts of the entrepreneurial capital away. Most interestingly, we we looked at the combination between corruption and tax. So what if the country is high in corruption and high in the tax? Well, that would be complete disaster. It would almost destroy entrepreneurship, bringing the intentions to zero, so surprisingly. And because corruption and tax becomes a, almost like a double tax on entrepreneur, completely reducing an intention to start a business. The predictive margins that we calculated demonstrated the effect is non-linear, means the stronger is the corruption and the higher is the tax, the worse off is an entrepreneur. At least in the countries with the high corruption but low tax is better than in the countries with high corruption and high tax. So corruption as a tax avoidant mechanism seems work, but if it doesn't, then entrepreneurial intentions will be significantly affected. Our paper is an intent to bring the conversation of entrepreneurial ecosystems at the level of the countries where national institutions matter. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Maxim, for the detailed presentation. Congratulations. Uh, we'll now pass very, very quickly to the next one. We'll, uh, we'll keep the discussion. Hi, Christina. Can you hear me fine? So we'll also see Ben, uh, ben Spiegel, who is connected, so he can also respond to the questions if uh, any. Okay, uh, so hi everyone. Thank you, Christina and other authors for bringing this uh, special issue together. Uh, so this paper is from my PhD research with my supervisor, Ben Spiegel, where Ben and I are contributing to the issue with our paper on accelerators and acceleration policy in entrepreneurial ecosystems. Uh, so just to give you a background, so our research gap emerges from the increasingly popular concept of entrepreneurship store support that is um, acceleration. And we are specifically focusing on uh, developing ecosystems of emerging economies from global south. Uh, the recent Galley reports and the literature uh, highlights the importance and the need for adjusting the acceleration model to the local needs, to the context and where they are implementing it. But still, we, we found that there's no clarification on how accelerators, accelerators respond to the needs and constraints of different ecosystems, uh, especially within the lack of resources and economic challenges for the ecosystem that are still developing and lack all these resources. So building on that, we followed a qualitative case study approach. Uh, we are using semi-structured interviews with accelerators, entrepreneurs, investors, and some network facilitators uh, from three cities of Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan being a country with increasing entrepreneurial tendencies, developing ecosystem, but very weak economic and political structure was like ideal case for us to figure out like how uh, under these constraints, the ecosystems and the accelerators are working even better than what we were expected before. So our initial data analysis uh, revealed that accelerators in resource constrained territories are more than just an organizational form, but a policy. We are calling it a policy because it's changing, it's subject to uh, territorial implementation. It just changed whenever, you know, like whatever the needs of the context and whatever the needs of the ecosystem are, it changes its position and it develops in a different way. So we are lending a policy mobility and mutation lens from economic geography literature to explain the transfer and transformation process. Uh, where just to uh, elaborate on that, uh, policy mobility is the study of construction, circulation, modification, and consumption of policies. As they travel from one territory to another, we were like, 
quite skeptical on using that because uh, it's it's an economic geography study and we are studying an organizational form with the help of a policy uh, mobility lens, but it kind of fit very well in terms of what we were coming out with our initial findings. So just to give you a brief overview of our, in, our findings and initial data analysis, uh, what, what we came across was that uh, there are three processes uh, that accelerators are actually using to figure out that how do they work in resource constrained situations. Uh, we found out they work in different forms and functions to support the local ecosystem. Uh, first of all, many stakeholders frequently borrow knowledge, networks, and other ca capital from other regional ecosystems and global ecosystems through field trips uh, and knowledge networks and transnational programs. Uh, it is used as a coping mechanism for the resource void that it, to address the resource voids in the local ecosystems. Accelerators also are changing the internal structure in response to the needs and constraints of the local ecosystem. They integrate multiple support structures uh, and funding resources to enhance the value of provided services. Uh, lastly, most accelerators just go beyond just acceleration and act as an assemblage of different support activities to develop the regional ecosystem through their knowledge and networks. These are the three coping strategies that we kind of figured out in our data that they borrow, they internalize the model, and then they work beyond acceleration to help develop the ecosystem and signal a change uh, for more resources uh, in the ecosystem. Uh, we also came uh, about some mutations in the acceleration form forms. They are differentiated on the basis by the funder strategic goals and the institutional voids that they respond to the most in the local ecosystem. These include forward and backward integration of accelerators and venture capital funds, uh, the coexistence of incubators and accelerators, uh, also a traveling model to take advantage of dispersed resources, uh, and a combination of traditional management and consulting, uh, management consulting and angel investing as a greenhouse model. Uh, and some overseas and virtual programs that were quite popular for attracting the international resources, funds, and their uh, network. You can read more about these acceleration forms and how do they contribute to address the different challenges in the local ecosystem. Uh, just finishing up, uh, we contribute to the research and practice by understanding the accelerator acceleration as a territorial perspective, territorial embedded policy that is responding uh, to the local needs and the context of the national context of, of the country or the region. Based on that understanding, uh, we employ a novel lens of policy mobility and uh, mutation to understand the coping mechanism that is, I just explained in terms of uh, three uh, inter-ecosystem borrowing, borrowing and institutional internalization and beyond acceleration. Uh, we are also identified the emerging forms and functions of accelerators in terms of five uh, mutations. Um, as a takeaway for future research that we are also thinking about is, uh, we all need to address questions around our understanding of regional and global entrepreneurship models and how they are implemented and how they are changing, uh, what kind of you know strategies actually change them, and th especially the roles of actors and institutes in resource mobility and model mutations. Uh, and maybe you know, look at a wider perspective and what are the implications of these changes on regional entrepreneurial ecosystems. That could be some re very relevant research in terms of what we in entrepreneurial ecosystem in regional context are talking about these days. Uh, that is all. You can read more about, I'm open to any feedback and all. Uh, thank you all for listening. I hope you uh, like the paper and enjoy it. Thank you so much. That's all. Thank you very much, Lisa, for the great presentation. Uh, we're going to follow up uh, uh, to the next uh, presentation. We saw uh, during this uh, your presentation uh, a question for Maxine's paper in the chat, but we follow up uh, any questions. So next presentation is Christophe Leronat, value creation by foreign international entrepreneurial ecosystem. So thank you, uh, David, Didier, and Christina. So I, I will give you a quick summary of the work to um, to introduce what uh, we have done with my colleague uh, Stephanie. Um, it's, it's more about um, the entrepreneurial ecosystem. So maybe the, the main question we have with Stephanie is um, 
when we are talking about anthropological ecosystem is where is the anthropological? And what we, we want to, to do is to, um, to introduce the anthropologist point of view, uh, not from a holistic point of view, but uh, to have a micro approaches to un uh, better understand uh, what happened in the ecosystem uh, and maybe what is the value that was created uh, for the entrepreneur, I buy the entrepreneur. So we, we have uh, developed a new uh, a case um, study with uh, very low tech firms. Uh, and we, we, we want to just present some um, important points we have uh, seen in the context of the case. So it seems that it's very important to have a multi-level approach to analyze the different interaction uh, and maybe uh, to understand the resource mobilization uh, and more relevant than the, the creation of a resource, we, we want to talk about the mobilization of resource and uh, maybe from a dynamic perspective, both resource and capabilities must be analyzed. So we try to, to see that in the case. Uh, so we have work about uh, Peznas. Peznas is uh, historical cities with a traditional art craft uh, with 50, 50 years of um, uh, development in art and uh, artists uh, with a very low tech companies. Um, and we have a nice, uh, at the same time, the entrepreneur ecosystem and the entrepreneur. And we uh, analyze the different interaction between both entrepreneurs and between the entrepreneurs and the ecosystem. And we try to see which change can uh, be uh, done in the firms and in the business of the entrepreneur due to the different interaction between the entrepreneurs and between entrepreneurs and the uh, ecosystem. What we, we try to to do is to maybe uh, qualify the interaction and we have distinguished three, three types of relation with different effects in terms of resources. Uh, so we have first coordination relations, relationships with its more collective activities. Uh, we have collaborative relationships with more dyadic relation and we have a cooperative relation with the dyadic, uh, corporate, dyadic relation between firms, uh, and it's more dyadic than the collective. Um, so when we want to understand which type of interaction, in fact, we have different findings between coordination, collaborative, and cooperative uh, relationships. And if we want to see the effects in terms of resource, we need also to introduce the question of capacities. And um, we use the classic distinction be between um, ordinary and dynamic capabilities. And what we have uh, seen in the case is found from being opposite. Uh, Plus, um, ordinary and dynamic capabilities seems to be a continuum between ordinary and uh, dynamic at two levels, from individual to collective, and from collective to dyadic and to individual. So there is no clear distinction between dynamic and ordinary, and ordinary seems to create dy uh, uh, dynamic uh, capabilities uh, in the case we have studied. So we need to, if we want to understand how the creation of resources is functioning, so we need to at least have a better uh, understanding of different level of interaction and how the resources are created and how the different uh, capabilities from ordinary to dynamics can uh, be uh, created and can develop activities to the um, entrepreneurs. So what we try to, maybe to do in this article is to show that the micro level perspective uh, with a more in-depth understanding of what happened to the entrepreneurs is 
may be something very important if we want to understand what happened uh, in an ecosystem. And maybe um, if you have the, the, the facts to understand the value creation, the RBV with resource and capabilities, the, with the interaction of a, different, of a different level will be very essential to understand the dynamic inside the ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christophe, for the great presentation. Uh, we also see another place, uh, another place ecosystem near here at Toulouse in Occitania. Uh, we're going to the next presentation of Karim Nunes again. Uh, a multi-level view. So, Karim, the floor is yours with the Laurent Spoutier. If you have any slides, you can now share them. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Christina. I'm going again to share my screen. It's okay for you. Okay. We can see. Uh, thank you, uh, Christina. Thank you, uh, David and Didi, for the opportunity to uh, present our uh, research. Uh, this uh, research is uh, carried out uh, in the Entrepreneurial Ecosystem Lab of uh, LabEx Entreprendre. Um, it's interesting uh, to uh, rely on uh, this uh, paper on the introduction of this uh, special issue with the question of geography, uh, dynamic, and uh, the condition of uh, the evolution of entrepreneurial ecosystem. Uh, uh, some um, um, territory want to develop uh, their uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem with the uh, image of uh, mythic Silicon Valley, but uh, they are confronted with some difficulties uh, because uh, territories uh, do not possess the same uh, stock of processes, uh, network dynamics, or governance uh, logics. So uh, it's interesting uh, to understand uh, what are the conditions. Uh, resources, interaction, mode of governance uh, that uh, can create uh, the conditions for the emergence and development of a sustainable entrepreneurial ecosystem. Um, to answer to this uh, challenge, um, you uh, develop a research question um, based on the complex adaptive system. Uh, the aim is to enrich this uh, theory uh, introduced uh, in the entrepreneurial ecosystem field uh, by uh, Randy. And uh, we uh, uh, decided uh, to focus on the seminal work of um, Simons and on the question of uh, decomposition of a complex system. Uh, it's uh, first inspiration. And the second inspiration of this uh, paper is uh, a configurational approach. Um, uh, we develop a framework uh, based on the configurational uh, theory with uh, um, the development of a triptych based on uh, dynamic uh, structure and um, uh, interaction and uh, with the question of context. Um, this uh, framework is based on the decomposition of the past dependence of the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Uh, we use uh, the uh, approach uh, developed by Spiegel on the attributes, and we uh, introduce a, a dynamic approach to analyze uh, the sequences of the uh, past dependence, and we decompose this uh, uh, trajectory of evolution of the entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, by focusing on the sub ecosystem. And it's possible to identify the different sequences for each sub ecosystem with different phases, uh, impulsion, creation, structuring, with uh, some main attributes uh, which uh, characterize this uh, different uh, phase. Uh, we um, develop a qualitative approach. Uh, we studied two uh, territory uh, in the same region, uh, in the south of France, uh, Occitanie, uh, with different uh, trajectory, different uh, history. Uh, and it's interesting uh, to uh, show the difference, uh, but also some proximity. And we can uh, see in this uh, table that uh, the proximity in the uh, organization of their uh, attributes uh, and we can uh, see uh, the importance of uh, material attributes uh, 
in each ecosystems. So we develop a comparative analysis uh, and the aim is uh, to uh, uh, characterize different uh, types of uh, configuration. So uh, the results uh, of this uh, research uh, is uh, uh, to analyze uh, two uh, configuration, uh, a political configuration uh, for Montpellier uh, with uh, um, a strong uh, political influence. Uh, the mayor of this uh, town, uh, uh, Georges Fresh, uh, impulse uh, an entrepreneurial and innovation policy and it developed uh, a large uh, entrepreneurial uh, support uh, sub-ecosystem. Uh, so is the main sub-ecosystem in this uh, territory. And we can observe um, a system of governance uh, hierarchic uh, with the importance of uh, decision makers, uh, region and also uh, metropole. Uh, this uh, territory is characterized uh, by uh, uh, high growth, and we can observe uh, the development of uh, unicorn, for instance, in this uh, uh, territory uh, characterized by uh, entrepreneurship and innovation. In uh, Toulouse, uh, the configuration is uh, very different. Uh, it's uh, an industrial configuration. Uh, this territory uh, is influenced by uh, industry and aerospace industry. Uh, and the uh, main sub-ecosystem is a specific uh, sub-ecosystem uh, based on industry. Uh, so in this territory, we observe also uh, fragmented uh, governance uh, with some difficulties of uh, interaction between uh, the different uh, sub-ecosystems. Uh, there are different uh, theoretical uh, contributions. The main contribution of this uh, research and, and uh, of this uh, paper is uh, to enrich uh, the theory of complex adaptive system uh, by introducing uh, uh, the principle uh, developed by Simons of uh, quasi decomposability of systems uh, in the form of sub ecosystem and sequences of attributes. We contribute also on the literature of uh, uh, evolutionary uh, theory and on entrepreneurial ecosystem by combining uh, uh, a structural and a dynamic uh, approach. Um, there are also a managerial contribution. Uh, this uh, representation of this entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, can help the policymaker in designing their uh, ecosystemic uh, strategy. Uh, there are different perspectives, uh, other comparison, and uh, it will be interesting uh, to uh, uh, identify other configuration. Uh, we have developed another study in, uh, in, in Canada, in Sherbrooke, uh, with uh, a different uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem path dependence. And it will be also interesting uh, to uh, uh, develop uh, a focus on the micro foundation of this uh, trajectory. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Etienne. The last presentation, uh, Etienne, the floor is yours compared to the analysis for every video from the planet. Etienne, if you have any slides, so you can now share them or you can uh, go for your presentation. No, I can start without uh, any slides, um, and I will be uh, short and sweet because we are out of time a bit. So thank you very much, uh, Christina, Didier, and uh, David for organizing this uh, great event. Um, I'm going to discuss about uh, our paper, which is uh, related to um, uh, resilience of entrepreneurial ecosystem, uh, especially in Madagascar. Um, and we uh, basically in the paper, we, we looked at three regional ecosystems within the same country. Uh, the first region is Embrost, which is the southern area, island of Madagascar and peri-urban. Uh, the second one is the Antananarive, uh, which is the center in the country's capital. It's in the, the island as well, and it's urban uh, region. And uh, the final one is Ansiranan, which is the northern area, tropical climate, urban uh, type of uh, ecosystem. Uh, 
And basically, we start with uh, this research question. How do actors and factors contribute to the resilience of an entrepreneurial ecosystem? And we are looking especially at the disruptions that can have uh, that can affect the entrepreneurial ecosystem and their adaptability uh, to reor their ability, sorry, to reorganize uh, the ecosystem. So we start with the you know this uh, key idea that uh, so uh, that uh, resilience from a, the perspective of an entrepreneurial ecosystem indicates the degree to which a given territory can continuously adapt to exogenous shocks and endogenous pressures and recover accordingly. So, uh, and of course, resilience explains why certain ecosystems thrive more than others. Uh, and we know from the literature that very few studies examine this uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem resilience, despite that the fact uh, that uh, this concept resonates uh, well okay. in entrepreneurship literature. Uh, we also know that very few studies looked at the uh, different uh, observation than the Western uh, countries. So Madagascar may be a good place to contribute and make a contribution in uh, uh, developing uh, economies. Uh, we uh, we uh, we've made the different focus group across the regions as well as individual interviews. Uh, in total, we made uh, eight focus group and forty seven interviews with entrepreneurs, institutional actors, uh, students, and uh, and a lot of people. Uh, and so, what we found um, we found uh, first of all for the Ambroch uh, region, it's uh, basically uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, they are in the precious wood carving industry, and uh, their, uh, their shock was that uh, the depletion of the precious wood species, and they were very proactive in uh, changing the, 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 the industry and making uh, the, the wood uh, more valuable. Uh, so they are more in the added value uh, type of entrepreneurship with the same resource. So they use less resource, but they make more value of it. Uh, so the, the, they were very dynamic in changing and, uh, the, and, make, and being resilient as an, as an ecosystem. The Tananari region, which is the capital, <clears throat> has a very different kind of shock. It was more caused by the digital shift, uh, and they were affected because they need to adapt. Uh, uh, entrepreneurs need to adapt to the digital transformation uh, in the ecosystem. And this ecosystem was more reactive, and it was uh, they were pushed a bit by uh, uh, third-party services that uh, want to uh, make uh, the ecosystem more uh, based on the, uh, on the digitalization. So they, they are more reactive type of resilience. And the final one is the Anseranan uh, region, which is based on the tourism, uh, beach, as well as the fishing industries, uh, the fishing industry. And it, they see that uh, the, the scarcity of uh, the free fishery resource that is coming. Uh, they have uh, problems with that, uh, actually, but they are doing nothing. And it's not because they don't know that it's uh, actually happening. But individually, the people know that uh, they, they are facing a problem, but collectively, they are doing nothing. They are just doing like they are, uh, like they are uh, right now. So it's more of an atonic time, uh, uh, type of uh, resilience. So, so far, uh, very passive uh, and uh, low in intensity. So what we found theoretically uh, from the resilience of entrepreneurial ecosystem is that they, of course, they are based on a disruptive event. Uh, the resilience is endogenous in nature uh, because uh, it, is, uh, it calls for responses rooted in local realities and carried out by local actors as well. And it's also dialogical because it's not only the individual that needs to do something, but it's also they need to have the, that collective, uh, you know, uh, taking care of the ecosystem uh, to make it happening. And it's also embedding because it embeds the economic uh, activities into the social realities. 
So, of course, it's uh, as a limitation, it's only one country, subjective uh, interpretations of fact and events. Uh, we all know that. And we are we selected only three regions over 22 Malagasy regions. So we believe that there are other regional configurations and type of disruption that can be studied to better understand the resilience of ecosystem. And we hope that our people will help to trigger that kind of research uh, in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Etienne, for the great presentation. We now follow uh, with uh, the presentation of the journal. So we are very grateful to have with us the former uh, editor-in-chief that handling this special issue. So she can talk uh, about uh, the journal and uh, what led it to this, uh, to this discussion. So again, the floor is yours. If you have any slides, you can now share your screen. And we're okay. okay. Thank you so much for giving me uh, the chance to talk about the review of entrepreneurship. Uh, so I am uh, I am Céline Baredi, uh, editor in chief, former editor in chief of the the review, and uh, I am associate editor right now of the review of entrepreneurship. So I would like first to say thank you to uh, uh, the guest uh, team. Um, leaded by Christina on that special issue on uh, on ecosystem because it was a real a great special issue with a very interesting and very qualitative uh, uh, papers and um, so have you as you have seen uh, lots of uh, very interesting things have been said and so it it opens avenues for new uh, new special issues and perhaps on the review of entrepreneurship. And anyway, we hope so. So it's uh, I don't know if you see my screen. Uh, so with Beranger Deschamps, we were editors in chief during uh, three years, 2023, and uh, the review was created in in uh, 2001, and it's ranked two by uh, the FNES, which is the French uh, ranking of uh, academic reviews. And for um, a year now, it's ranked by Scopus also. Uh, the, um, the review is property of the Academy de l'Entrepreneuriat et de l'Innovation. Uh, and it's a bilingual uh, review, French and English. And it's only academic peer review article that are published in that, uh, in that review. So our mission is to enable researchers in entrepreneurship and innovation and SMEs to enter in communication and to share knowledge uh, of entrepreneurial and innovative practice by focusing on different level of entrepreneurship. So actors, context and support, and also management systems when the, 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 the new venture is developing and, uh, and becoming more SME than a new venture. Um, it concerns mainly researchers, but as you know, we are really embedded in the society. So as it is mainly uh, for researchers, it is also for students, for, uh, for teachers, and if I can say widely to uh, business leaders, association of entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs themselves, and perhaps actors of local authorities or public institutions. So what type of research do we publish? So as I said, it's firstly uh, academic research and we try to push research to the uh, forefront of current topics and challenges concerning the entrepreneurship field. But also we like to have multidisciplinary and multi-contextual scientific uh, research. Uh, and the, this uh, is related to the Academy uh, of uh, de l'Entrepreneuriat de l'Innovation thematic groups uh, that were created and um, that work very well. And we encourage uh, the leaders of those groups to propose special issue to the uh, review of entrepreneurship based on that idea of multidisciplinary and multicontextual. We also publish theoretical or empirical articles, also critical approaches. And we value we, we valued at the same way qualitative and quantitative approach. And also we promote, as you have just seen, 
uh, special issues carried by guest editors in a particular um, theme. So I put here the uh, the link to uh, more uh, uh, information uh, to access to more information on the uh, on the review uh, on the website of Care. So uh, basically, we have four bilingual French English issues per year on Cairn for the French one and Cairn International for the English one. Every publication, every article accepted for publication is pre-published in French and in English a month, more or less, but it's uh, barely a month after the acceptation for publication. So it's very quick. So authors can use and evaluate their articles very, uh, very, very, very quickly. And also we used to uh, do a kind of valorization of publication by videos of our uh, webinars like uh, we did uh, a few minutes ago. We have special issues. Uh, we do regular calls for proposal for international special issues twice a year. And we usually have two special issues per year. Also, you can access on YouTube uh, on the, the um, uh, the um, review, review de l'entrepreneuriat channel, uh, review of entrepreneurship, because we have both names. Uh, you can access to very helpful videos for publication dedicated to uh, authors. Um, and where they were carried out by the editorial team. So for example, how to avoid a desk reject, uh, how to respond to evaluators, uh, how to present qualitative or quantitative methodology and so on. So I'll let you go uh, and have a look at those uh, very interesting videos. And so um, I'm done. So I hope you uh, you will uh, continue to uh, to do uh, to 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 propose your research to the, the the review of entrepreneurship and to propose interesting um, uh, special issues for the future. So thank you very much, Celine. It was a great pleasure to hear you. Um, it was a great pleasure to be part of here uh, to this discussion. We had uh, uh, the chat that we, we had several sharing messages. I didn't saw any burning questions, so I can invite all participants if you have any questions of the uh, of the uh, the presentation we had today uh, to contact directly the authors. I saw one question that was responding in the chat. Uh, we also had the pleasure to have the papers uh, in the chat, so we're very grateful uh, to continue this discussion, to have access to these uh, different studies. So we have been delighted to open this discussion on entrepreneurial ecosystem. We went uh, from a, a state of the art, what we knew, what we didn't knew, and we saw how different studies were uh, elaborated uh, to advance uh, our understanding of entrepreneurial ecosystem, uh, the time and the space challenges, uh, and also the resilience of the ecosystem. So for us, it was a great pleasure. I would like to know. Uh, I would like to thank all uh, the guest editors and the editors that uh, definitely support us. Uh, the 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 all the ecosystem participants. For me, it was a great honor to work with David Obrich and Didier Chabot. I uh, also saw how we trust this process, which is uh, challenging. We also saw during this webinar we had some technical issues, but I think that if there is a, a scope, if, if there is a goal, we can all make it to overcome these barriers. So this is the ecosystem, the power of the ecosystem. And I'm also grateful to our viewers, but also to the community. So we also saw the participants that make this webinar uh, an important success. Uh, we had a discussion uh, in the chat. So I'd like to thank, uh, thank you very much, the guest editors, also the editor uh, in chief for their trust uh, to uh, hold on uh, to, 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 to have uh, this uh, special issue after uh, two years. So Celine, uh, Celine Baredi, uh, Berenger Deschamps, uh, all the community that helped us to, to have this special issue finalized today and share uh, share it to all of, the, of these uh, participants and the, and of course the, the authors that share their um, their uh, papers today. So we will share. We have the recording. We will share this video and we engage you to continue this discussion. Thank you very much.